Hey, it's Frank here with 4D Honeybee. Welcome to the honey house. In other words, my garage. It's time to extract the honey that I took from the hives here. And what's happened is I extracted it a good three weeks ago, but the temperature has just been too cold to actually spin the honey because with temperatures uh, on the cold side, uh, the honey is just too viscous, it's too thick, and it doesn't extract as, as efficiently as if it were warmer. So today we got up to 14 degrees, which is not much. It's late October, um, at 14 degrees, about 57 uh, Fahrenheit. And uh, so I put the heaters on here. I've got this little guy as a gift recently. And I got this guy going. So they're heating up the honey. It's got to be 25 degrees in here now, like 77, 78 degrees. So hopefully the honey's warm enough to spin it. doesn't matter because I've got to do it today. It's the last day I can do it. And there should be about 30, 40 pounds of honey there. Uh, that's my haul for this year. Again, it's been a light year because of my uh, sicknesses and eye issues. But uh, I'm going to show you the whole process from scratch. And uh, let's get some honey out of these bees. Thanks for joining me at 4D Honeybee. So the process is pretty simple. I've got this uh, little two frame spinner. You pull a couple of uh, frames out. So you pull a couple of frames out, you put them in the spinner and uh, you spin them. Frames are capped obviously, right? So you gotta decap them first off. And what I use to decap them is this roller. Now the reason why I use a roller is because it ends up just puncturing the cells and not actually cutting a whole bunch off. If the frames, if the wax build outs stick out a lot like this, it's really easy to use a knife, you just cut it off, right? But you end up with a lot of wax in the honey and a lot of wax that you need to render. If the, if the frames are fairly flush like this, this side here, it's really hard to get a knife into there, right? So. Personally, I think you end up making a mess and you end up doing a lot more work than you need to. Watch how quickly you decap one frame using this, uh, using this roller. I'm just going to back up the camera here so you can see. It. Don't mind that. So check it out. You just roll it across. Roll it down. And if you want to, you can... Go vertically as well, just to make sure you've completely got it. And that's it. Very little, of, relatively little of this wax ends up in your honey. Now, I mean, you end up filtering it anyway, so that's not a big deal to have wax in your honey. But if you don't want to, if you're not going to render the wax, or if you find it just a pain in the butt like I do, this is the best way. And if you find that you miss, you know, an area, I had my kids do it for me one year and they tried their best, but they didn't do a great job of it. When you spin it, you pull out the frame and you feel it's heavy on one side and you just run it over again. So that's it, this one frame ready to spin. See that? Okay, so here you see I got two frames in the spinner. And all you need to do when you put them in the spinner is make sure that you put them uh, opposite side facing each way. So see how here's the top of the, this frame and the top of that frame. They're on opposite sides, right? If you put them both on one side, then it would spin, uh, it would be um, an uneven load. And the spinner, the, the spinner here will be kind of shaky for the first few, uh, for the first few frames until it's got a bit of honey on the bottom. Then the honey acts as its own ballast and it becomes really stable. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so I'm just going to start to spin it really easily. And if you look at the side of the spinner, you can see the honey and the wax and all that just flicking against it already. Now again, because this spinner is right empty, that's why it's so wobbly. So I'm going to have to let go of the camera here and use two hands for the first few frames until it, uh, until it starts to get heavier.
now one thing I do is I before I uh, I turn the frames around to get the other side going I flip them upside down because depending on how the cells are oriented it'll be more efficient for honey to fling out of them with the angle that the bees build the the comb out or it'll be less efficient depending on which way they're lined up so I'll flip them upside down before I turn them around to the other side and that should uh, that should be the thorough extraction of honey from one side of each frame. And you'll start to notice that they get much lighter very quickly as soon as you start spinning. Okay. Okay, so now we've filled this tin up as far as it can go, basically right to the bottom of the basket. Um, and now you just start to empty it out. So you empty out of this spigot through a sieve or, a, or uh, some kind of a straining device down into this bucket below. And from this bucket, you go out of this spigot right to your bottle. So the filtering of the, the cappings and the wax all happens at that point through this sieve. I have a different sieve, I just couldn't find it here. It's a double sieve with two different sizes and I find that very effective as well. But we'll just let this go nice and slowly. I have, I still have uh, eight more frames to, uh, to extract and then a lot of grass on there, eh? oh well. Uh, and then I will be done. I su suggest it's gonna be between 40 and 50 pounds of honey because this is a good 30 pounds already in there. And uh, we still got eight big frames to go. So uh, next process will be bottling. So here's a look at the finished product. Take a look at this. Mana of the gods. Stone overflow. Beautiful. 100% all natural wildflower honey. That's it. Thanks for watching.